Surviving a major disaster, whether a natural event, a breakdown in society, or a long-term power outage, or whatever it is, takes preparation in many different areas. It's not just about having supplies. It's also about your skills, your mindset, and how well you can work with others. So in this video, you'll rate yourself in 10 different areas to see how ready you are, both for short-term and long-term survival. Each area is worth up to 10 points, so at the end, you'll have a score out of 100. So let's see how prepared we all really are. And remember, this is a self-assessment and a way for you to determine what aspects of preparedness you need to focus on. So no bragging rights here, just another way to look at how your prepping is going. You might want to grab a piece of paper, write down each of the points of prepping on it, and then write down your own number. First up, security. Protecting yourself and your home is essential. If you don't have any self-defense skills and you don't have a sufficient amount of self-defense options or don't know how to handle security, you got to rate yourself a zero. If you have some basic knowledge but not much practice, maybe you're a five. And if you're fully trained in self-defense, firearms, and home security, you'd score a 10. How well can you protect yourself and those around you? Write it down. Location. Where you live matters a lot. Most of us don't have the money to just up and buy land in the middle of nowhere, but you do need to factor your location into your SHTF survival score. If you live in a crowded skiddy city, give yourself a lower score. Regardless of how prepared you are in other areas, a crowded city is going to make any SHTF situation that much harder to deal with. Maybe a zero to three if you're in a high rise in a city with over a million people. If you're in a rural area with access to water, resources, and a great climate, you'd score closer to a 10. How well can your location support you, both in the short and long term? Write down that score. Prepping gear and supplies. Having the right supplies is a major step to surviving any situation. If you have less than two weeks worth of food and water, you'd rate yourself a zero. If you have at least three months worth of supplies, that's a five. And if you have more than two wor years worth, you'd score a 10. But if you're like me, one of my first steps in an SHTF situation is to get seeds into the ground, whether that ground is pots inside my house, a hydroponic system, into the dirt outside, or microgreens trays. So while I do have a more than sufficient stockpile of food, within three months, I plan to have some type of harvest already able to be eaten, with my food stores designed to supplement what I'm growing. So if your answer is three to six months of food, but you feel the same way I do, then your score would be higher than a five. Don't forget to count other items like medical supplies, tools, and things you could trade if you need to. Now write down that score. Growing your own food. This one goes along with the last point. Being able to grow food is important, especially in a long-term crisis. If you have absolutely no experience gardening, you got to rate yourself a zero. If you have some experience or space to start growing, maybe a five. And if you're already growing some or most of your own food and you know how to keep it going, you'd score a 10. Can you grow enough to sustain yourself? Write down that score. Practical skills. The more hands-on skills you have, the better your chances are in a disaster. If you can't fix things and you have no practical skills, rate yourself a zero. If you're a bit handy but you're not an expert, maybe you're around a five. And if you're skilled in areas like carpentry, plumbing, mechanics, or first aid, you'd score closer to a 10. So how useful are your skills in a survival situation? Write down that score. Financial preparedness. While money isn't everything in a crisis, it can help you get set up. If you have a lot of debt or no income, you got to rate yourself a zero. If you're making ends meet and have a little savings, you're probably around a five. If you're financially stable with enough resources to make big survival purchases, you'd score closer to a 10. Although I seriously doubt many of us are tens on this aspect. The economy and inflation have destroyed a lot of all of our savings. So how well can your finances support your survival plans? What's your score? Community. 
This is the one section of preparedness I believe most people struggle with the most. It's hard to survive alone. If you have no one you can re rely on, rate yourself a zero. If you have a small group or a strong family, but you aren't part of a larger community, you'd be around a five. And if you have a solid group of at least 10 trustworthy people you can count on, you'd score a 10. How strong is your support system? Write down that score. Resourcefulness. I think most preppers score well in this category because we're constantly thinking about, well, if A happens, I'll do B. Being resourceful means finding solutions when things go wrong. If you can't think on your feet and you struggle to adapt, you're probably a zero. If you're somewhat resourceful, but you're still learning, maybe a five. And if you're great at making do with what you have and coming up with creative fixes, you'd score closer to a 10. How adaptable are you in tough situations? Write down that score. Physical fitness. Another aspect of survival most of us are not so great about keeping up with. Your health and fitness play a big role in survival. If you have serious health problems or you're physically unable to handle hard work, rate yourself a zero. I do need to interject here. Many people with health problems have started to investigate ways to treat those problems through herbal medicine so that they're prepared should medications for blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic conditions disappear. So if you're one of those who has started making a plan B regarding your health, give yourself a few points. Also, regardless of how much food you've stocked, you are going to lose weight. And I b personally believe that many health issues will be lessened or disappear once that weight falls off. If you're somewhat healthy, but you could improve, you're probably around a five. If you're fit, healthy, and ready for physical challenge, you'd score a 10. So how well can your body handle the demands of survival? Write down that score. Mental health. The one that causes everyone to cringe when it's mentioned. For some reason, no one likes to think of this, or they've never faced a situation that has challenged their mental well-being. Your mindset is just as important as your supplies. If you struggle with untreated mental health issues or addictions, you'd rate yourself a zero. If you're stable, but you've had some challenges, you're closer to a five. If you're mentally strong, you can handle stress and stay motivated, give yourself a 10. So how well can you manage stress and stay calm? Write down that score. All right, what's your total score? Now that you've rated yourself in these 10 areas, add up your scores. How prepared are you to survive a disaster, both in the short term and over the long haul? If you scored over 80, you're in great shape and probably better prepared than most people. From the survey I found that did this self-assessment, very few people scored over 80. If you scored between 50 and 80, you're on the right track, but there's still room to improve. This is where most preppers feel they're at. I personally honestly scored myself a 68. My locations, my knowledge, my practical skills, my supplies, and my ability to grow my own food make up for my horrible community and financial preparedness scores. Because honestly, who's financially prepared anymore? If you scored below 50, don't worry. This just means there's more you can work on to get ready. What do you need to work on the most? Write down one or two areas where you can improve and start taking those steps today. Remember, survival isn't just about being ready now. It's about staying prepared for whatever comes next. And within the next few months, there are several different potential SHTF scenarios that could and may play out. So this assessment, your honest answers, and the steps you take right now based on your answers could make all the difference.